structured outputs by OpenAI are huge and no one really seems to understand it. If we look at this McKinsey study, the state of AI in early 2024, only 8% of companies are still utilizing it in more than 5 functions. So although obviously a lot of companies have already attempted to somehow integrate AI into their businesses, it still seems like everyone is using it only for very basic stuff. And the most reported reason why is inaccuracy. In other words, these models often hallucinate, which can cause some unexpected issues. Or they could be four, because now with structured outputs by OpenAI, you are guaranteed to have perfectly structured outputs matching your schema every time. Yes, that's right. You are guaranteed, meaning that they have reached 100% accuracy on their evals. This is really big, okay? So in this video, we're gonna break it all down. We're gonna see how they did this, how it compares to standard function calling, what are the limitations, and of course, at the end, we'll also attempt to build 100% reliable AI agents with both OpenAI SDK and my own framework, Agency Swarm. Let's dive in. Okay, if you're new here, welcome to this channel. My name is Arseny and I run an AI agency and an open source agent framework called Agency Swarm. Before we dive into the structured outputs, we first need to review function calling because over time, even my understanding of this feature has shifted. And function calling is absolutely essential for developing AI agents because it allows your LLMs to call external functions or in other words, tools. Without function calling, there would be no agents, period. And functions are essentially just code. So let me visualize it for you. You know how in a standard program, we have certain functions executed in a loop based on certain conditions until the program is completed, right? For example, you can save a file, you can call an API, or you can open a browser window. This has worked well for decades to automate simple processes but the problem with this approach is that you can't possibly account for all the scenarios that can happen in the real world. Imagine how long it would take you to write all of the possible if statements when executing a process like lead research. What if the lead doesn't have a LinkedIn? What if they don't have a company website? What if the email is hidden? And so on. You see, you can't possibly automate a dynamic process like this with a rigid if then statements. So this is where AI agents come in. When developing AI agents, the functions are the same. The difference is that now, instead of you having to hard code all of the possible conditions in a loop, the agent will execute them for you. So this means that you don't even have to consider all of the possible scenarios. You only have to describe what you want to achieve and provide the agent with the necessary resources. That's it. The agent will then determine by itself when and how to use your tools. And if we look at any function, for example, in Python, there are always some input and output parameters. This means that in order for the agent to use this function, it needs to know what those parameters are. And the best way for the agents to determine that, and in fact, for any machines to determine that is through JSON schemas. So this is how your agents know what parameters your function requires and what outputs to expect. For example, if you're searching Google, your schema most definitely is gonna contain a search query parameter. By providing this parameter in a schema, the agent will then know that in order to use this function, it needs to provide a query as a string. However, unfortunately, what often happens in production is that your agents hallucinate and provide incorrect parameters anyway, causing a lot of fun on the back. So whenever we use function calling, the agent is not guaranteed to provide all the arguments correctly. And this is why now OpenAI released this new feature called structured outputs. With structured outputs, you can now finally be 100% sure that the agent will provide all the necessary arguments with their types defined correctly every single time. And this is really big. Even if it was like 99.999% it would still not be a big deal because you would still have to account for errors. But with 100% reliability, you don't even have to think about it anymore. 
you are guaranteed to have perfect outputs matching your schema every single time. This is the real breakthrough for all AI agent developers. Okay, now let's look at how exactly they've done this. In short, the way it works under the hood is by constraining the list of choices that the AI can make at each step in the response. So what OpenAI did essentially is they constrained this list of choices for their models only to the choices that match your JSON schema at the moment. For example, if in your schema, according to one of the parameters, the next token is expected to be an integer, the model's choices are constrained only to numbers. And if the schema expects a bracket or a comma at the end to make it a valid JSON, OpenAI constrains it only to special characters. This shift in the available vocabulary of the model at each step, not just in the beginning, is crucial because without it, they wouldn't be able to achieve this 100% accuracy. Now, how do you actually use this feature? Well, there are two ways. First, you can use it with the function calling feature, simply provide strict equals true in your function definition, and you'll automatically have the perfect outputs. The second way to use it is through the new option in the response format parameter. Some of you might know that before there was only one option for the response format, which is JSON object. JSON object does force your agent to provide the response in the JSON format as well, but the thing is, it does not guarantee that the agent will follow the exact format that you describe. So while it is likely, again, 93% likely, not 100%, to provide JSON, it's certainly possible that the agent will still confuse some of the parameters. The difference between these two options is that in the first one, you will have the schema as a tool call, so you'll need to submit the tool output before continuing the conversation. And in the second option, the JSON appears in the message as a string. So we'll of course go over the code and I'll show you exactly how to use it in a bit. But first, how do you know which option to select? And this is actually really simple. The function calling you should use only when you are executing tools and the response format you should use when you are trying to structure your responses. That's it. So now the final question, why not use this new strict mode every single time? Well, there are of course some limitations. Specifically, the first time you run this mode, you will experience a slight delay of around 10 seconds because OpenAI needs some time to process your new schema. Luckily, you're not gonna have this delay the next time you run. Additionally, not all schemas are supported at the moment. Some extremely complex schemas might not work. And finally, it is not eligible for zero data retention policy, which means that with this mode on, OpenAI will retain some of your data. So overall, I recommend using this feature when you don't have any super strict data privacy concerns for all mission critical tools, all tools that are frequently used in your application, or when you have a very large and nested schema. Now let's go ahead and actually try it out ourselves in the code. Start by installing the latest OpenAI package or make sure to update it if you are running this locally. Set the model to the latest GPT-4.0 version. And by the way, what's also crazy is that this new model is two times cheaper than the previous GPT-4.0 model, which was already extremely cheap. So first we're gonna test this feature using function calling with the standard OpenAI SDK. Create a function schema by defining an example function called getWeather with strict mode to true. Then create a simple getResponse helper function to retrieve the tool call from the model. To use it with our schema, simply pass it in the tools parameter like before. Now let's create another helper function to print the tool call in a nicely formatted way. And finally, we'll run it with a simple question like, what's the weather in San Francisco? As you can see, it outputs all the arguments in the tool call response. This isn't very different from how we used function calling before. But again, the key thing is that you are guaranteed to have those arguments perfectly defined according to your function definition. So now let's try the second mode, which is more interesting because this time we can actually use Pydenic directly with OpenAI SDK. So we'll create another agent, for example, a simple math tutor and define our math reasoning Pydenic model. This model includes a submodel with a list of reasoning steps and a final response. Here we'll use the new response completion sparse method with the response format parameter, which directly takes our Pydenic model. If you followed this channel before, this might look familiar. 
it's extremely similar to another library called instructor. However, the key difference is that with instructor, if the parameters are incorrect, the agent will have to rerun the query to correct itself. With this approach, on the other hand, you are guaranteed perfect outputs on the first attempt which can save you on token costs and latency. So in summary, using the response model parameter here guarantees correct outputs without retries, while in instructor, it may require additional attempts to validate the arguments. So let's now run simple question with a simple math equation. Afterward, we can print our parsed response. The parse parameter in the result provides auto completions based on our type. So let's print it out in a more readable format However, what OpenAI has done differently from Instructor is the addition of a new special refusal parameter. So if you ask it how to build a bomb, which OpenAI obviously will never answer, it will provide you a special refusal result explaining why it can't output your JSON schema. As I mentioned, you can already use this in my framework for building AI agents almost in the exact same way. So let's now try to do this with Agency Swarm. First, set your OpenAI client to the one we've set before, and then define the same weather function. To use it with function calling, you can either convert your schema using tool factory class, or you can define a base tool directly. With tool factory, all you need to do is just define the callback, which will be executed when the agent calls your tool, and then convert the schema using a special from OpenAI schema method. This will create a new getWeather tool and automatically convert it from the schema into a base tool class. Alternatively, you can create the getWeather tool with location and unit as a Pydenic model and then set the run method instead of a callback. To set it to strict in my framework, here's a new addition. You can now simply create another special subclass inside this tool called toolconfig. And inside that toolconfig, you can set the strict parameter to true. Now you're good to go. Let's create an agency consisting of just one agent. If you want to learn more about how to use my framework, definitely make sure to check out the videos in the description. Now let's run the same prompt, what's the weather in San Francisco? And as you can see, it outputs all the correct arguments, but now it also continues the conversation with the final message because all the underlying logic is handled for you. So you don't have to run the tool manually and then provide the result back. The framework will automatically execute your run or callback methods and then return the response back to the agent. So this is the first way using function calling. And the second way is with the response format. So again, define the math reasoning model as above. And when creating your agent, you can now pass this model into the response format parameter, just like on OpenAI. So set up your agency, get the completion result, and you'll see that the agent now returns the result in JSON. For now, it returns a string, so we just need to parse this result using the model validate JSON function from the math reasoning model. Now we get the same Pydenic math reasoning model with a result. Quick update guys, since I recorded this video, I actually did implement the new get completion parse method. And of course, it provides the type hints as well. Awesome, right? And if you want to learn more about how to build reliable AI agents from scratch, make sure to watch this video next. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.